by to have a look at the Titan engine. There's some very interesting things going on inside the tent that uh, involves them tearing down the engine and building it back up again. That's really cool for people that have some time to come and look at that. They'll get to see a lot more. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with John Heitland, who is the head of sales at Continental. I think that's about the right title, isn't it? Yeah, sales manager for CMS, but I've uh, kind of migrated a little bit lately over to the Titan side, which is a, a personal preference for me, obviously. But I, we do get excited about the Titan lineup here at Sun and Fun. And like you said, Dan, we are uh, actively involved as we speak right now, tearing down a, a Titan engine on a, a nose stand in our tent. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just excited to be here. Uh, this is kind of our fledgling show. Um, with Continental uh, uh, owning and, and acquiring the Titan brand of uh, experimental engines, and we're extremely excited to uh, have several now uh, 340 engines specifically flying on a lot of uh, um, LSAs and experimental aircraft. Yeah, we've been seeing them more and more, John, over in Paradise City, not far from here. Uh, there are several operating, and uh, let's see, if I were to tick off a few, your very first one was Cub Crafters that embraced the engine, and other people started looking at it, what that could do, and went, okay. So you've now got uh, uh, Just Aircraft, I think, is using it. Um, American Legend is using it. Uh, name some others that you know, you know of. Rands, obviously. Rands, well, Rands has got it. John up, up north has uh, got one on the front of his, and he'll be flying that shortly. Uh, we've been talking to Commuter Craft a little bit. So they're excited about it. They have a 340 on the back of their uh, uh, um, their prototype. Their prototype, the, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yep. and, and that's flying extremely well, according to Ethan. So, yeah, there's quite a few out there flying already. And, and uh, I know there's some others in the works that we yeah, don't need to talk yeah. about. But uh, so more and more we're going to be seeing this very powerful that's, that's engine. Correct. Give me some of the basic specs for the engine for those that have missed it so far. You know, on the 340 specifically, we're looking at 180 horse continuous. So no reduction in power needed at once you get taken take okay. off. Okay. If you need it, you got it. It can stay there all that's the time. Right. Okay. Um, that's a difference from some of the other somewhat higher powered engines that have to be restricted. That's correct. And, and obviously those, uh, I don't want to confuse anybody right off the bat, but it is a light combing based design, but it is um, obviously tightened by Continental to kind of get that out of the way first and foremost. So um, it is 180 horse continuous. Um, the one that's actually sitting on the front of uh, the Super Stole out here, uh, left the factory weighing 259 pounds. Okay, that's the installed weight the installed then weight, of the engine on the, on the with scale. all the component parts? Exactly, okay. it, as, it, as it left the factory. Um, obviously, the installed weight when it's on the firewall is going to be a little more due to oil coolers and lines and oh, fuel I lines, see. things okay. like that. But okay. when it left our factory with starter and alternator, uh, ignition system and whatnot, it was a 259-pound aircraft uh, or engine. And um, okay, installed that's not, weight was that's still not too bad a pr uh, weight premium over, well, let's say a Rotax or something, which is, I don't know, in the neighborhood of yeah, 170 correct. or 80. You, you so know, it's less, but you've also got a lot power, more right, power The power-to-weight ratio is really what's um, the selling point of this engine right now. We have, um, you know, I don't know exactly what it is on the ratio, but, you know, for instance, it's it's got the same power of most IO 360s, like combing 360s at 180 horse, but it takes up the same footprint as an IO 320 and is about 20 pounds lighter than a, <laughs> at a stock O320. Yeah, those are some good numbers. Do those numbers again just to make sure we got them again, clear. Um, 180 horse continuous, weighs in at 259 pounds. Um, has the same output horsepower wise as an IO3, most IO 360s. There are some specs that are a little bit more and less. Um, but it, it's the same size as an O320. You can fit it right into whatever aircraft you have that currently is designed for an O320. Cool. Same conical or dynafocal mounts. And then, uh, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it has more power than, than the 320, weighs 30 pounds less than the 320, has the same power as the 360. So Yeah, those, it, are, those a, are some great specs yeah, then. It's, no it, wonder it's being embraced by the guys making the smaller airplanes. That's right. They typically have less... Uh, uh, engine area to, to install an engine, so they might like more power, but they just couldn't do those other That's ones. That's right. Okay, so tell me a little bit about uh, what you know about the history of the engine, how it sort of came to be, and, and, and uh, you know, going back to when Continental, uh, excuse me, when um, uh, Cub Crafters first embraced this, there were a lot of kind of eyebrows going, well, I don't know, that seems like a lot of power for these airplanes, but there you go. So right. give us a little of the history of the engine, you know, John. On the, on the history of the engine, um, it's been now, I think, 2006, I believe, that, that Titan, or ECI, formerly, you know, the, the company that had Titan line up uh, originally, um, started building the engines out of certified PMA light combing parts. And when they put those all together, it becomes an experimental engine because obviously we don't have oh, the, I the, see. the type, okay, right, the right. type the TC for the engine. So it had to be built as a, 
as a uh, experimental, but it's all pretty much all certified parts. Um, and they're all manufactured and, and, and assembled in San Antonio. It's kind of a segue. But obviously, like you said, Carbon Cub or yeah, Cub Yeah, ECI is still in San Antonio, yeah. even though uh, Continental's base right. is in Mobile, Alabama. Right. We, we purchased but you're the, leaving them where they're at. Right. We okay. purchased the, uh, um, some of the assets of Danbury Aerospace, which is ECI and then Titan uh, parts and Titan engines. Uh, and, uh, How's that working, by oh, the way? I love it. I love it. I've always been an experimental before I ever started working for Continental. Oh, okay. And, and it allows me to come and get out of the house a little bit and, and visit <laughs> the experimentals. But, Excellent. But getting back to your question, yeah, the uh, Carbon Cub embraced the 340 because it was obviously the lightest engine out there um, per horsepower that they could find. And, and obviously they um, obviously placard their, their, their cruise power back to fit in with the LSA regulations. Um, but if you run the, the aircraft on an experimental, yes, right, aircraft, in their you, particular no thing, right? Sure. So if you're not, if you're experimental amateur built, you can use the whole 180 horse in their application, and it might vary by airframe. That's so right. they'd have to do different things. But there's a maximum amount they can utilize and stay within the regulation, uh, within the standards, the I should standards, say. Yes. That's correct. So let's talk. Since you mentioned standards, uh, for example, a Rotax or a Jabiru engine goes through the ASTM process to be. Uh, and works with the airframer to uh, to go on the engine, uh, to go on the airplane. Does this engine have to go through that same it process? It has been. It has. Um, we love the market. We love the flexibility. We love the people working on the experimental and the LSA markets. Um, it gives us some freedom to, to do things that we don't haven't in the past been able to do. You know, we've played in the experimental market for a while with the O3 or the O200. I'm sorry. Um, and that still is a, a viable option for a lot oh, of Oh, yeah, guys. there's a, there's a new one over on the field there right now. That's right. Uh, They wanted the O200. They didn't need or want this much power, right. so right. you're still in the game with the O200 oh, as yeah, well. Yeah. The O200D, I think, officially, correct. right? The D is one that a lot of the folks are liking because it's, it's a little bit less weight yeah. than the O200A. So do, uh, do a comparison since it's within the company there, the O200D to this one. Uh, in weight numbers for those that are thinking about what right, they need. The O200D is 100 horsepower uh, continuous again. Um, the, the, it's a lightened up version of the O200A, which has been a venerable engine for way back Forever, now. yeah. And um, uh, it comes in, I believe, it leaves our factory with hardly any accessories on it, but, it, but ignition systems, the Magnetos, uh, at 199 pounds. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so that really puts this one in perspective. That right. 50, you're getting a lot of power per pound of weight. Right. Exactly. Yeah, very interesting. Well, looking at the engine, John, I, I'm kind of wondering if if you got choices on how things can be done because you're not locked into that certified engine world where things can't change so easily. It, exactly, and that's the I think one of the highlights for me as a a sales guy is is how it, easy it is to order one of these engines and how. Um, uh, uncookie cutter like that we can do. I mean, I know that's a non-standard term, but um, <laughs> meaning you've got a lot of choices we, for how this can engine can go sit together. Down with the customer and go right down a menu, uh, starting from what basic engine size you want: 0320, 340, 360, 370, uh, and then you know the 540 right now. Um, and then we kind of go into then what do you want on your cylinders? Do you want it to be the straight fin? Do you want to be ta uh, taper barreled so it's a, rate, a oh, weight reduction? Okay. Um, do you want them uh, through hardened or do you want them to have the, our, our, our uh, um, trademarked uh, process called NICE? It's a, a nickel nitride. Um, okay. Most guys order that option because it's a five year warranty on on uh, wear and corrosion on those cylinders. Okay. Uh, for guys that don't fly very often, that's a great, uh, great yeah, right. option. And then we jump right into, uh, you know, obviously if the guy's already got an idea whether he wants carbureted or injected. Oh, you offer it both ways? Both ways. All and, right. And it comes from the factory already run with the configuration that you order. You don't have to get the bare bone engine and then hook all the parts up together at home and try to run and, and set yeah, up at home. Yeah, sure. It's That'd already, be a lot smarter. We'll already test run at the factory with the options you pick. So, you know, the carburetor, we're using the Marvel Shoveler carburetors on the um, on the uh, fuel injection. This particular one has the EFII uh injection and ignition system on it. It's a combination system, which is uh, a pulsed fuel injection system using auto plugs and auto um, type uh, electronic ignition. So you can just kind of go through this menu and go, well, oh, I want this, I want that, absolutely. I don't want this, I absolutely. do want that. And, and, then, and then the final feature, which is kind of the caveat for most guys, um, we'll paint this any color you want to <laughs> for free. Custom painted it as is. well. Huh? I mean, right. Whether it's Packer colors, whether it's uh, Clemson <laughs> colors, wh whatever you want. If it's an alma mater or you just want to match it to the um, your aircraft paint, uh, you just simply give us a paint code and we'll match it at the factory and it'll, it'll match your aircraft cool. when it comes in. Nice little bit of customization. It, now, 
because of its background, this engine is well known by a lot of people. Continental is well known, a brand all over the world. But do you have, uh, do you offer specific training for Titan? Yeah, there is um, an opportunity for the actual builder to come in and watch and help the engine being built. Um, that's one thing that really heightens the, the owner's awareness of what goes into the engine. But but any any mechanic, any out, anybody out there that's whether it's certified or or, or a kind of a backyard mechanic that's, that's familiar with with continental or light combing, it should easily be able to work on these engines. Cool. So. So in addition, then, when you've done some specifics, you have classes or something that we people do. can Continental, attend? We um, do. Continental is starting to do that. We've always done it with our Continental side, and that is something we do have in the in the plan uh, to start offering the, the Titan side as well. Okay. And we have classrooms, obviously, in Mobile, and we'll probably end up doing that in San Antonio. Uh, so, John, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, but first is, what kind of fuels can be used with the engine? What's, what's your range of choices? Well, we prefer, uh, as a certified uh, manufacturer that we all uh, want these engines run 100 low lead. That's what it's designed for. But because we have piston selection opportunities, uh, when we start looking at, you know, eight and a half to one or less compression piston or compression ratios, uh, it does allow the use of automotive. Ah, fuel. Okay. If they pick um, a certain, if, if the if right they, cylinder, they can use auto right gas. Or a compression ratio, then we um, have seen successful operation of these engines on auto gas. And obviously, we want to keep the the ethanol levels down to a minimum. And, uh, and making sure that they have a good supplier of the auto fuel and it's not been sitting around a tank someplace. Yeah, for a sure. While. I am thinking of people around the world, though, where 100 low lead can be a very right. short we, supplier or no supply. So right. you being that. able to use auto gas is a nice choice. Yes, okay, let's talk about TBO then. Okay, TBO, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a 2,000 hour TBO. Again, it's a recommendation. And the nice thing about being experimental is we don't have to send it into the shop or send it to a um, any repair facility, the owner, if he's knowledgeable or, or excited about doing one, he can tear into this at, at his leisure. Okay, great stuff. Well, you've given us a lot of information. Nonetheless, there's a lot more still waiting out there. I bet you we can find out more through your website. That's right. Where would you send people then? We, uh, the main Continental website is continentalmotors.arrow. Okay. Um, and Titan Engine specifically can be found at uh, www.titanengine.com. Okay, very good, John. Well, thanks for telling us a lot more about the uh, Titan 180 horsepower engine that's becoming increasingly popular in the light aircraft space. Um, you can find more about Continental and lots of those airplanes that are using it, plus all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com.